Hi everybody, I'm Julian Fraser. I'm the program manager of the Global Evaluation Initiative. I'm talking to Marie Garda today. She's the executive director of 3IE, the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation. Hi Marie, it's lovely to see you. Hi Dugan, good to see you. So Marie, what is the strategic relevance of evaluation capacity development for 3IE? So Dugan, it's, uh, it's, uh, 3IE's core mission is to ensure that rigorous evidence is used in decision making. And, uh, and of course, you'll, you'll, uh, I, I'm sure you'll appreciate uh, this part of the answer. It's, you know, you need to take a, a theory of change uh, approach. If we want to influence policy, it needs to be relevant, uh, it needs to be uh, good quality and contextualized, uh, the evaluation needs to be demanded, uh, it needs to be un understood, uh, its insights appreciated, uh, it needs to be used, and importantly, it uh, needs to not be misused, so to speak. And so you need to, to really work uh, on building the capacity all through uh, this uh, chain. Uh, and and that's really what uh, what we do, and what I think I also uh, led out in uh, in uh, my my previous response. So working with commissioners, with funders, with uh, with uh, policymakers and and program managers um, to both demand and uh, you know and use evidence and understand uh, when it is needed and of course it, very importantly as i said we need uh, to uh, to build the capacity of the evaluation field of the evaluators themselves um, um, partly because we need so much more evidence, so many many more evaluations. Uh, we need them to be better informed by local context uh, and uh, and we need um, to 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 really expand uh, this this that the, the field of evaluators. We need to also help all of our, all of us to push the frontiers on what good evaluation uh, looks like. And I think we, we're still learning in that regard. And there's there's uh, uh, much to be done. And of course, at the end, um, you know, we need to to build on and, and, and strengthen um, the capacity to use what comes out of, uh, of evaluations. And that actually relates also not only to use new evaluations, but one thing we've seen and, and we can come back to later, we uh, the capacity to use existing evalu evaluation and evidence in a good way. Uh, you know, I think the last year has brought out the importance uh, of that. Marie, tell us some of the highlights of what 3IE has accomplished lately. Sure, happy, happy to do that. Um, so um, 3IE, for example, recently developed an impact evaluation methodology training program to and delivered it to a group of researchers uh, at the APHRC. And uh, this work was, uh, was part of a, a series of trainings funded by the Hugo Foundation. Um, that the staff were taking to strengthen their capabilities in monitoring and evaluation. And um, the three modules we covered were uh, Introduction to Impact Evaluation, uh, Experimental Designs and Quasi-Experimental Designs. Uh, each module incorporated case studies featuring 3IE studies, stata exercises and interactive presentations. And the trainings were delivered um, sort of at, from November 2020 to January 2021, so clearly online, virtual training. Um, and the initial trainings were very well received by APHRC, uh, who are now strategizing to develop a fully functional impact evaluation unit within the uh, next few years, and is planning to work with 3IE to improve their capacity in impact evaluations. Um, so this includes additional trainings such as the geospatial impact evaluation and cost evidence trainings that will be delivered um, uh, in August 2021. Um, another example uh, is um, uh, an impact evaluation methodology curriculum preparation that we did for the University of Zambia with CLEAR AA. Um, 
So 3IE developed uh, five modules uh, for University of Zambia faculty to use in their impact evaluation courses. Um, we also incorporated a training of the trainers where 3IE staff walked through each module with the faculty to underscore the key uh, sort of learning messages for each section. Um, and the modules cover topics such as uh, theory of change, managing an impact evaluation, analyzing the results and reporting results from an impact evaluation. Um, and um, you know, the University of Zambia were able to successfully use all of our materials in their pilot class. Uh, so this was this is also a very uh, promising approach. Other successes, just briefly mentioned, include uh, the range of evidence gap map trainings we have uh, provided over the years, uh, which have led to a ra range of agencies uh, now doing the, uh, their own evidence gap maps, uh, which I think is, you know, what, what, what more you can claim in terms of a success. So Africa Center for Evidence, ACE, is an example. Uh, another is the uh, DNP, the, the Department of uh, National Planning uh, in Colombia, who even, uh, who even have been sort of developing their own guidance uh, on how to do uh, evidence gap maps uh, in, in Spanish. Um, and uh, finally, just to mention that we have developed a range of training materi materials delivered in uh, French in our West Africa program. Uh, and also would say that that is, is uh, you know, something that was really missing uh, uh, because there's been very little evaluation material and, and, and publications in French. So that uh, filled the gap, uh, I would say. So those are a few, uh, Julian. I I'm, I'm, would be happy to come with more. <laughs> wow, that's an impressive portfolio of work, especially during um, lockdown and operating remotely. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you think evaluation capacity development faces. What, what do you see as some of the big roadblocks that we need to navigate? Uh, there, 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 there are a few, but you know, one of them is, I, I'd say that actually, and, and I don't say this lightly because, but training is probably the easy part. Um, but, you know, linking then the, 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 the people who have been trained with hands-on real, uh, real work and real world experience is, is harder. Uh, and, and as you well know, I mean, for a training to really stick, uh, the trainees must be able to get experience doing the work. And, uh, and it has been far, hard and, and, you know, continuously, is, we find it hard to find funding for the study, uh, the types of studies uh, which sort of incorporate a, a, a teaching component um you know and 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 sort of relatedly um you know the, when there is capacity building etc these these kind of studies uh, and, and this kind of work often takes longer uh and maybe also more expensive and uh, and we've sort of repeatedly find that uh, sort of funders often offer us this this impossible task right they, they want sort of short timelines um, often insufficient, uh, they often put insufficient resources to the task, and then they do want ECD built in, and they want it at no risk. Um, and, 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 and that's, that's I think, it, all of that is, is quite a challenge. A second challenge is, um, I, I think, uh, is about getting the right people in the room. Um, so we, that we train at a, the right level, and that, uh, you know, in, and that means, you know, in a sense, both people who can in, be influential in their organizations, but also people actually have the interest and are just not just put into the room to, to fill, fill a seat. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, there, there's, there's the issue of churning of staff that we have trained. Uh, and, and how do you sort of get to a sustainable model where, where it becomes institutionalized when there's, there's a, a huge turnover uh, of, of staff? And um, and then and then I think all of or some of this really relates to the bigger question of sort of is it a priority or not? Uh, is ECD in in a, in a, uh, an institution, be it a, uh, and that could be an international development institution or a, or a government organization? Is uh, is evaluation and evidence use a priority or not? Um, and, and, and often we find that, that it isn't, it's, it's sort of a place people go while waiting for another post. Uh, and that sort of, again, um, you know, 
is probably some of the underlying reasons why you have the churning, why you don't necessarily have the right, uh, or, or not always have the right people in the room, um, etc. So those are those are a few thoughts on 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 that. Um, when you think about interesting evaluation capacity development initiatives across the world, what are some of the things you see that you think are really interesting or promising? Um, well, of course, I think the Global Evaluation Initiative is, is interesting and promising, but I think we'll get, get back to that. Um, uh, I, I think, you know, first of all, and, and this is also related to, to, um, to COVID, I think the virtual, uh, you know, evaluation uh, or the virtual world has basically sort of allowed us to bring capacity development home to people in a, in a very different way uh, than than uh, than, than in, we had in the past. So I, I do think that's that's um, something that. Uh, uh, has 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 changed. But the other the other uh, the other thing is um, that I think um, the interest and and um, increasing understanding and, and interest among policymakers and program managers for you know rigorous evaluation and and evidence um, you know is 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 something that looks promising. I, I don't think we're there yet. I think there we need to do. There's much more that needs to be done. But I think you know I've seen I've seen a positive trend which I, I uh, find promising. Um, and then I think it's really great uh, to see much more collaboration between international partners um, you know working together to share resources or contribute towards common goals and and this goes I think a long way towards uh, you know things like harmonizing standards uh, um, and and you know 3IE is really a big champion of um, you know collaboration over competition um, a couple of recent examples, um, you know, in terms of, of these, you know, successful or, prom or promising collaborations is that we've seen, um, uh, you know, 3 is part of uh, the costing community of practice, uh, which is working on developing guidelines and resources for partners to use in incorporating cost evidence into economic evaluations. And, and this is sort of a broad partnership that uh, Includes, you know, uh, JPAL, IPA, Sega, uh, uh, and, and Dime, and, and the like. Uh, 3IE also uh, is part of the Geo for Development initiative, which is focused on incorporating geospatial data and analysis into impact evaluations. Um, and so 3IE is working with partners in the Geo for Development initiative um, to to deliver geospatial impact evaluations trainings to Global South. Uh, researchers. Um, so just to, to recap, I think probably the, the latter point of sort of increased uh, increased collaboration, uh, probably uh, less, uh, you know, um, overlap, uh, etc. Uh, is 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 uh, quite promising. Um, that issue of um, overlap and fragmentation is a big strategic concern for the GEI and we'll we'll come back to that. OK, let's stay with COVID for a minute. Um, what are some of the opportunities you think that COVID has generated that we need to take advantage of? Most importantly, the normalization of virtual events and meetings. Um, previously, in order to be a part of the conversation, uh, people would have to fly to other countries and, and pay often fairly expensive uh, conference fees. Um, and due to COVID and remote working, many conferences and events uh, became virtual and free of charge. So this makes it uh, much easier for people, especially those located in, in the global south, to be able to attend capacity development events that they previously may not uh, have been able to. Um, you're also able to see uh, a much larger and more diverse audience in our, our, our events. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, 3IE actually turned, we turned our uh, annual evidence week into a virtual webinar, webinar series. Uh, and we were, you know, still able to hold important conversations, uh, but now we were able to reach a much wider audience. Uh, and in fact, due to the, the success of those initial events, we now have regular webinar series, uh, which anyone is able to, to attend. Um, 
and our virtual trainings, uh, training programs uh, has also allowed uh, for increased collaboration as we uh, we're able to bring in additional partners and experts um, without additional logistic uh, issues or, or travel needs and, and, and really found that, you know, many, many more experts uh, are, are able and willing to join our events. Uh, I think the second issue is that, um, you know, COVID meant sort of, you know, an, an exploration uh, and, and, and sort of an increased understanding, I believe, uh, among the decision makers uh, around the need uh, and, and also increase their appetite uh, for evidence. Uh, and and I'd, I'd sort of highlight particularly one area that, that I think was, was particularly important for 3IE that is involved in not only doing impact evaluations, but we also are uh, doing evidence gap maps and, and systematic reviews. Uh, and we have uh, our development evidence portal where, where all of these different resources are available. And what we saw was a, a huge increase in the use of these type of resources. So basically of the existing evidence, which is something that, that in the past we've, we've sort of always wondered, well, it's, it's all here, but, but why isn't it used more? Um, so, um, so just over the last year, the amount of, of demand we had for our help desk services to extract existing evidence on uh, policies that were relevant uh, in, in, uh, during COVID times, etc., was, was really exponential. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that, that this new appetite uh, to, to use existing evidence will sort of, is now a learned behavior that will, will, will remain. Let's um, let's focus on the Global Evaluation Initiative. The um, GEI is intended in one of its objectives to address fragmentation and prevent um, overlap and duplication, which is something you, you mentioned earlier. Is this something you think is important? Yes, I think uh, I think this is uh, extremely important. I think in you know, really that increased coordination would, would help to re reduce, you know, duplication of services, which we are, you know, currently seeing, uh, while, you know, ensuring that organizations are able to bring their unique skill sets. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, various organizations, while, while we do do things in, in various areas, we have some areas of, of more heavy expertise. And I think uh, by sort of really uh, sort of coordinating and, and bringing these different uh, skills uh, and, and, and comparative advantages uh, um, to bear, I think uh, I, I think we'll do we'll do better and, and we'll be able to bring better service uh, to to uh, to the world and, and to the the ECD work that we are doing. Are there things you think we can do together that we can't achieve alone? Yes, I, I think uh, definitely. First of all, just uh, the sort of getting a, a better um, lay of the land. I mean, is 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 just you know, for, for, is, is something that uh, that I think a, a large global initiative like GEI. Uh, was, who will sort of has the resources and the mission to to do that uh, would would be you know you know would would be able to do and and that would would uh, be a huge value in its own right. And another area you know, Dugan, we talked about this uh, before, uh, is that I, I think you know uh, one thing that that GEI could could uh, help uh, bring to 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 the the sort of the the partners in a sense. Is uh, is the um, really sort of helping mapping out the important policy moment, policy decisions that are uh, are, are sort of uh, coming up in the future in countries we work in. Um, you know, because that's that's often, as you know, the 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 uh, challenge that we sort of uh, the evaluations might not come in at the right time. And so, uh, from 3A's perspective, if, if GIE could sort of be a, a, a leader in helping identify uh, the kind of evidence needs that will be upcoming, and then and then we can concentrate on sort of uh, uh, providing that that evidence in time. I think that would, you know, as a, as a concrete, uh, you know, ask or, or request, I would uh, that I think GEI could could really uh, help fulfill. 
So I'm going to ask you one last question about the GEI, and it's about what you think success would look like. Um, and I'm going to ask you to finish this sentence. The GEI will be successful if it. Or if we, if I may do the little change, if we see a significant increase uh, in the depth of use of evidence uh, to inform policy and programs in participating countries, and an increasing amount of quality evaluations being demanded and led locally. I, I think that's a great answer. And I think what I really love about it is when you said we, because it is a partnership and it is something we need to get done together. So thank you so much for joining us, Marie, and thank you to everybody who's watched the video. Please stay tuned. There are going to be more partners talking about the work they're doing and their relationship with the GEI. Do you want to say anything to close, Marie? No, thank you. Thanks for inviting me and, uh, and uh, thanks to uh, anyone who's been <laughs> listening and, uh, and uh, hoping that, you, that uh, uh, we get many, uh, many participants on this, uh, on this ECD journey of ours. Thank you.